I made two times exactly the same dough. And in this video, I want to find out what's better. My default technique where I preheat the bottom and the top part of the Dutch oven, plus then applying a few spritzes of water, versus just preheating the bottom part of the Dutch oven. I am hoping that this might result in even more oven spring. Now at first, I only wanted to conduct this experiment and show you, but then I learned so many amazing things about the whole baking process. Featuring all the previous learnings from my previous experiments, the actual experiment, a crazy Hungarian scientist, an apple, and super nerdy charts. <laughs> That's so sad. Please enjoy the footage. I conducted a few experiments. In this case, the left hand dough was spritzed with water before the bake and the right hand one was not. The spritzed one won. I felt like there was more insights to be learned, so that's why I made another super large batch of dough, allowing me to compare the winner of the previous experiment with a new contestant. And then I asked you. You voted on testing using an ice cube. The idea is that the ice cube creates a lot of steam the moment it starts to evaporate inside of the Dutch oven. I couldn't see a major difference in the technique of using an ice cube versus the technique of spritzing your dough. The results were somewhat similar. One thing I noticed is that the ice cube dough had a little bit more oven spring. But that could also have been my shaping technique. So yeah, I felt like we had a draw on that experiment. But still, I had two more doughs ready for the next experiment. A little bit of background while you can enjoy this amazing, oddly satisfying footage of me shaping a super large blob of dough. The crust of your bread is formed by the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction gives your bread that typical browning. That's great, however, that Maillard reaction also stops your dough's expansion. You want to delay that reaction once you have reached your oven spring. That's where steam comes into play. It condenses on your dough's surface. When it heats up again, it evaporates. That cools down the surface, just like when you go for a swim in summer and leave the water. So my theory was that if I just preheat the bottom part of the Dutch oven, I could delay that Maillard reaction. The reaction typically happens at around 140 degrees Celsius or 208 degrees Fahrenheit. You are welcome, Americans. Anyways, that's the theory. Let's put this to a test. My Dutch oven has been preheated to around 230 degrees Celsius and I always like to check that because that seems to be the optimal temperature for baking your bread. And let's check the temperature of this dough. And you can see it cooled down quite a lot from room temperature. But you can also see how it lags behind a little bit. So the fridge temperature was set to 4 degrees Celsius, but it's still at around 9. So that's why inside of your fridge, your bread is always going to continue proofing. And you have to account for that. But based on my recent tests, the pH of 4.1 also seems to be in a good range. So very excited to bake this and see. I always like to sprinkle a little bit of semolina flour on top. This just makes sure that the bread won't stick to the Dutch oven. Hopefully the dough is coming out of the banneton. Nice. That's where I really like to use the linen here. Linen? Linen? <sighs> Sorry for my German English. Let's score this. I'm gonna be opting for scoring in the center. And now my default method, spritzing. And some more spritzes. And into the oven. I'm changing from fan to upper bottom heat. And then I'm setting the temperature to 230 degrees Celsius. It's gonna bake like this for 25 minutes, lid covered. And 25 minutes, what's hiding inside the Dutch oven? The moment where I'm always a little bit scared. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's a beauty right here. Now back to the oven for another 25 minutes. And we're going a little bit crazy for the next one. Okay, let's hope this comes out. And it does, and I can already feel the heat on my gloves. Nice. Let's score this. And Spritzes. And you can already see how the semolina just changes its color directly. And just to show you, it's not preheated. <laughs> Some more spritzes. I am changing to upper and bottom heat and 230 degrees 
So I'm just venting a little bit of the heat for a few seconds and then let's start baking. And 25 minutes passed and I'm really excited to see what's hiding inside. <laughs> Look at this. It increased in size a lot, a lot. We don't have that much of an ear though. Very, very interesting. So let me now let this finish. Oh, and yes, there's good crust at the bottom already. Oh no, and now it collapses. Okay, back to the oven now. <laughs> Look at this. Since opening up the Dutch oven. <sighs> okay, back to the oven. <laughs> and here, my default bread. Looking delicious. I don't know exactly what happened there. Maybe it was me when I was trying to open up the Dutch oven, but other than that, I'm super satisfied. Amazing looking ear, different colors, and just some <laughs> amazing biscuits there. I could just pop them all day long. I kind of like the scoring in the center, just the way how the bread opens up. You pretty much have two ears almost, just looking fantastic. And the other one just baked in a Dutch oven, which was only heated from the bottom. So many amazing blisters as well. Look at that. It didn't open up as much as I hoped. So not really that much of an ear development here, but overall it has increased in size quite a lot. In terms of vertical oven spring, the spritz one definitely won. However, I feel that it expanded a little bit more overall than this bread. And I'm super excited to test and see the difference in terms of crumb. Wow, amazing looking crumb. And let's check out bread number two, the one which was baked in the Dutch oven where we only preheated the bottom part. And here we go with the crumb. Very, very interesting. We don't have that ear, but this crumb is also definitely featuring a great consistency as well. And this crumb, even for pre-shaping, normally I never get a crumb like this from pre-shaping. Both breads compared side by side. The one which was baked like I normally do in the completely preheated oven. And here the one just with the bottom part preheated. I would say crumb wise, I'm not able to see a major difference. What I like more about this bread is that it has this ear and this just adds another layer of consistency. Also, if you just compare it from the colors, this bread has more colors than this one. So the taste is gonna be better on this bread. Here we do have quite a lot more vertical oven spring as well. To me, that's not such a deciding factor, but maybe this one is a little bit more Instagram worthy. <laughs> as well. So I would say as always in baking you have to find the sweet spot between all the parameters. One thing that I could imagine is that here we are forming a crust a little bit faster compared to this bread. Oh and it seems I need to upgrade my uh, bread slicing skills. Seriously if you have some tips to slice the bread a little bit better I would <laughs> appreciate that. I'm always making those amazing breads and then I <laughs> ruin them when I'm taking a slice. Anyways, being me, I felt like I was only scratching the surface of what was actually happening while you baked the bread. Then I had an interview with Kristen from Foolproof Baking. And then two amazing things happened. First, I got a nice new haircut. And she gave me the contact of Laszlo, somebody who really understands the physics and chemistry of the whole process. Anyways, I went to his Instagram account to send him a message. And then I saw that he was needing using this insane machine. <laughs> and I instantly knew this is the guy I should talk to to understand more about the actual baking process. So what I learned is that the crust is not the right word for the surface of the dough at the early stages of the baking process. A much better term is called gel. Entschuldigen Anyways, background. On the dough surface, the flour starches in presence of heat and water. 
what happened with my voice there. It turns into that gel. This gel forms a thin and transparent layer which holds the dough's shape somewhat. This gel is still somewhat extensible and allows the dough to continue increasing in size. The size increase comes from internal gas expanding as the temperature increases. Furthermore, the yeast ferments more rapidly as the temperature is increasing. Now it's actually kind of sad if you think about it. The yeast is like, yeah buddy, it's warm, let's have some munchy party. And then boom, oops, I have landed in the death valley. <laughs> That's so sad. Now that I'm thinking about it, this very deep question comes to my mind. Is Brad actually vegan? To visualize the gel, I made another bread and I steamed it using an ice cube and after around 5 minutes of baking, I decided to open up the Dutch oven and check the surface temperature. I wanted to see whether the surface temperature was above 100 degrees Celsius or below. Furthermore, I wanted to see if there are signs visible already on the actual dough expansion. And let's check what's hiding inside. <laughs> see all that water here? Let's check the temperature. And look at this, the temperature has not increased that much yet. It's at around 70, 80 degrees Celsius. So if I just had baked this in the oven, it would probably be way hotter. But this seems to be the steam making sure yeah, that it doesn't heat up too much. I'm going to be putting this back into the oven. I'm hoping for some more <laughs> oven spring at least. Let's check. Some more water now. <laughs> wow, look at this oven spring. I'm very curious to also measure the temperature now. Okay, it's now at 100 degrees. This is interesting because this is also the temperature where water evaporates. And I'm suspecting at this temperature we don't have any Maillard reaction. You can see that it's not really starting to brown. But now I'm going to finish that uh, without the lid and this is going to create us that had my yaw reaction. Just if I touch this, you can see it's, let me just measure the temperature here again, also at around 100 degrees. And this is very interesting because this gel here just makes sure that the dough keeps its shape pretty much, but also no my yaw reaction, so no crust forms, it's still somewhat extensible. Anyways, let me finish baking that. I'm super excited to see what's gonna happen in the end. And here we go, another 15 minutes, and this is how the bread looks like. Let's check the temperature. And see that? Now we are at 120. So this is where the Maya reaction starts to happen. Very interesting. Um, I could definitely bake this for a little bit longer, but this is also just personal preference, what kind of bread you like the most. So I'm gonna stop baking this now because I don't want this to get too dark. But again, that's uh, what you personally prefer. So I felt like I still didn't fully understand what was actually happening with the different steaming methods. Spritzing, ice cube, no spritzing, preheating only the bottom part of the Dutch oven. So I wanted to conduct another experiment. But since I didn't want to make a dough all the time, I figured, okay, why am I not just going to use an apple? That makes it a little bit simpler. So I'd just be using a cold apple inside of the Dutch oven to simulate my dough. And then I wanted to test the temperature. And then I used two probes one for the surface temperature and one for the ambient temperature inside of the Dutch oven. Now this channel would only have 1% of its awesomeness without you. I shared the raw data with you and then you science the heck out of this. I wish I had your data visualization skills. Anyways, let me show you the interesting results. I still don't fully understand what to make of this and I would be very curious to hear your thoughts on what this experiment shows. What should be the next experiments that I should conduct? Please drop a comment in the comment section. Oh, and I already conducted the next experiment that you voted for, baking in a Dutch oven versus baking on a stone. And I'm super excited to show you the results in a bit as well.